Welcome to a beautiful sunny day. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Are we ready? It's going to be a beautiful day. Good morning, Samira. Good morning, David. Good morning. Let's give everybody just a moment to get on and then we'll start with a little singing and a little dancing to try to wake ourselves up a little bit. Good morning. Good morning, Avery. Good morning, Mrs. Light. Good morning, Sasha. Good morning, good morning. It's good to see everybody. Mrs. Light. Hi, Dominic. Our D friend is here. Ready for a great day? We'll finish Dazzle. I've got Dazzle right here. Here's Dazzle. So I've got Dazzle here. Yes, Samira. I have a D. You do. Okay, keep it in your smart brain for just a little bit. We will get to our D word shortly. I've got my D right here. So we will get to our D word very soon. So let's do this. We have some friends that want to start off with some talking, which is fine. Let's go ahead and say good morning. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good, morning. good morning, boys and girls. Let's go ahead and mute ourselves. Let me make one quick announcement here. Um, let's see here. Sunday, I can't see you. Ira, you went somewhere. Let's see here. Let's turn our cameras on. There we go. Morgan, I can't see you, sweetie. Will you turn your camera back on? All right. Let me call on Samira. Yes, Samira. Will you call me? Uh, yeah. Just give us just a little bit, okay? We'll get there very soon. Yes, Avery. I got a two. You do? Congratulations. That's exciting. You're growing up. That's wonderful news. All right. Yes, Ava. That's right. You got it. Horses and H word. All right, boys and girls. So let's give everybody an opportunity to kind of stretch and move and get ready for our Good day. Morning. Good morning. Welcome, Vivon. Glad you're here, buddy. All right. So go ahead, stand on up, get yourself in a spot where you're ready to sing and dance with us. And here we go. Why 
can sometimes be a vow. It can say the long I sound like a fly, or the long D e sound like a baby. These are the vowels of the alphabet. They have two sounds, so don't forget. They're called the short sounds in the long. They'll help you read and write so small. These are the vowels of the alphabet. They have two sounds, so don't forget. A, E, I, O, U. These are the vowels for you to use. A, E, I, O, U. They say two sounds, that's what they do. To rock and learn. Beautiful, boys and girls. I saw several of you up and moving this morning, but I love seeing that. So we know those vowels are super important and we're gonna keep talking about them and learning about them. All right, boys and girls. So this morning, I'm going to show you, there you are, Morgan. This morning, I'm gonna show you, here's our favorite letter D. And we know we've been reading all about our friend Dazzle the Dinosaur, and we will finish the story today and find out what happens with Dazzle and Maya. But right now, even before we get started on our D words, let's sing and write our D song. So everybody reach high in the sky. Here we go, ready? D says da. D says da, D says da, and D says da. And I see lots of kids that are remembering to write a little D, you start out with a C. So C that goes up and then you come down and give it a little tail. Wonderful job. All right, so we are thinking about our words that start like da. Da, da. And I am going to pull our list over real quick here. It's hiding right over here. So I've got our list right here. And these are the words that start like da, da, da. And I'm gonna start out with a D friend who didn't get a turn yesterday. So we've got Dominic Dilophosaurus, dinosaur. I'm calling on our friend David. David, go ahead and unmute yourself. Tell us your D word, buddy. Dino? Okay, so we have dinosaur. So I was kind of thinking for you something else, perhaps? Is that a dinosaur or is it a dino? Dino, you're right. But you know what? Can I tell you a secret? The beginning of dinosaur is already right here. It's already right there. So we kind of already have. No. Di no so when you write your favorite D words, it's totally fine for you to write dinosaur. Oh, and David. That's what I was thinking. David, exactly. Now, David, are we going to write your name with a capital D or a lowercase d? Big D. That's right, because that's an important word, isn't it? So here we go. We're going to write. Big D, Dave, David, David, there we go, and here's David, all right, David, David has a big smile most of the time, how much do you love school, David, do you love school big? Infinity. Infinity, I love it, so David loves school infinity, we're going to give David cool hair, all right, cool hair for David. And he loves school infinity. He's got a big smile. All right, great word. I'm calling on my friend. Um, I'm going to call on Vivon this morning. Vivon, tell us your D word, buddy. Dragon. Dragon. Can everybody clap this word with me? Here we go. Say dragon. Ready? Dragon. How many syllables? Dragon. How many syllables? Two syllables. As a matter of fact, when we write it, we're going to actually write drag on. Drag on. 
drag on. So everybody get your hand up, help me spell dragon. So everybody's gonna get their hand up. We're gonna spell dragon together. Everybody tell me, start with D, Mrs. Lai. Here we go, ready? D, there's a blend, let's listen to it. Dr, you hear the R? Okay, let's see what comes next. Dra uh, apple. Drag, g, drag, drag on, on is literally sight word on. O n, drag on, O n. All right, so I'm gonna have to draw a dragon. Is this a fire breathing dragon? Oh, it's a fire breathing dragon. Okay, so it's gonna be scary and maybe it's breathing fire because it ate spicy tacos. Did it eat a spicy taco? Oh man, this dragon. All right, so this dragon is here and he ate a spicy taco and he is breathing fire. So let's give him a taco. There we go. And let's give him some fire. All right. Oh man, he ate a spicy taco. He's breathing fire. Whoa. All right, good one. Dragon. All right, I'm going to call on Samira. Yes, Samira. Dazzle. Dazzle. Like our friend Dazzle. Here we go. Dazzle. All right, now Dazzle is his name. So what kind of letter does Dazzle start with? D uppercase. An uppercase D, that's right. So here we go, Dazzle, we are getting you. So here we go, I've got my big D. Help me say this slow. Here we go, ready? Da -a apple, Daz. that's a double Z. Dazzle. The last sound is an L and there is a silent E. All right, so Dazzle is a beautiful shade of light blue. Beautiful shade of light blue. And he walks on four legs. Okay, and he's got some spines just kind of like right on his head. And then of course he's got his dazzling glittery spines right here on his back. And I don't have glitter right now, but there is dazzle with his glittering spines on his back. All right, so I'm coming over here. We can add another word for today. I really wanna call on Langston. Langston, will you unmute and tell us your D word, buddy? And also, when, when you did the dragon writing, it reminded me of, of Dragon's Love Taco. I had a feeling. It reminded me of that, too. The, so, when... <laughs> oh, Langston, I don't know why I can't hear you, honey. Will you try it one more time? Let me see. Get a little closer to your computer. Your microphone is on, off. There you go. Okay, so we're gonna look at Curious George. Come on out, dictionary. Come on out, Curious George, dictionary. So we've got some good ones like, like desk, dictionary, hmm. Door, dream. Are you inspired by any of these yet, Langston? I I only know that. All right, what is it? Dictionary book. Dictionary. That's right. And dictionary, just by definition, is a book. Isn't that awesome? So, Curious George Dictionary. All right, so this is a good one. So Mrs. Lai got a little bit off of my color scheme here, but I'm going back to it. All right, everybody help me spell dick. 
Dictionary. Clap it with, count it with me. Dictionary. Four syllables. So I'm going to start with my D. It's kind of a big word. Everybody get your hand up. D -i igloo. I hear this short I. Dictionary. Now it sounds like an SH, but I'm gonna tell you it's a CT. Diction. Un is I O N. All right, that's kind of a tricky part. Diction. Airy. Airy. I hear the A, the long A. Airy. And I'll tell you the E sound on the end is actually a Y. All right, so we know that a dictionary is a book and it's got lots of ABC words. So there I go, there's my dictionary, my ABC words. Okay, now we are not done. We are not quite done. <laughs> Keep your special word in your smart brain, all right, keep it there. We will come back to our list of D words tomorrow. We're gonna get to Booker T. Washington in a moment. I want us to find out what happens to our friend Dazzle. I want us to find out. So here we go. We are going to listen to the rest of the story. So let's remember what happened to Dazzle yesterday. So we know, don't drop the book, Mrs. Lai. We know that there's gonna be lots of different dinosaurs in this book. And we know that there was a mother Myosaurus and the mother Myosaurus laid her own egg in a nest and that surprisingly, another egg showed up that was sparkly and dazzling. And so when those eggs started to hatch, all the myosauruses gathered around to see what would come out of that glimmering, dazzling egg. And what came out was Dazzle. And Dazzle has glittering spines. And Dazzle and his friend Maya, became the best of friends. And Maya told Dazzle that they used to live in a safe valley with lots of food and lots of water, but that valley was taken over with a vicious, by a vicious Dragonosaurus. And so even though they know they're not supposed to go past the trees, Maya and Dazzle come up with a plan to go find their old home. And so they set off and a couple of times they get really lucky. One time they find a gentle Stegosaurus and then they find a Hold on. But then they find a very scary T-Rex who tries to eat them. But they manage to get away from the T-Rex and get cozy up against a warm tree trunk. But is that a tree trunk? Nope, it's not a tree trunk. It is an Apatosaurus. And the Apatosaurus said, I'm sorry, little dinosaurs, my leg was getting stiff. The Apatosaurus was gentle and kind and trying to let Maya and Dazzle take a rest. And they did. And this is where we stopped yesterday. So have Maya and Dazzle decided to go home where it's safe or are they still on their journey? Let's see. They didn't wake up until their tree trunk lifted up from the ground and shook itself. I'm sorry to disturb you, said a deep voice, but my leg was getting stiff. It wasn't a patasaurus. 
What are you two doing so far from home? He asked. Maya decided to tell the truth this time. We're trying to find the cave where my family used to live. But we got lost, said Dazzle. Could you show us the way? He wanted to say home, but Maya interrupted. The way to the cave, she finished. The Apatosaurus waved his long neck thoughtfully. The Dragonosaurus is a dangerous dinosaur, he said, but as long as it is still daytime, I don't see the harm. The Dragonosaurus is terrified of light. The Apatosaurus reached his head above the trees and called to the flying reptiles for help. Down swooped two pterodactyls and a Quetzalcoatlus. I'll take you there, said the Quetzalcoatlus, who was big enough to carry the two little dinosaurs. But you have to be ready to go back at sunset. I'm not staying around when that Dragonosaurus wakes up. They reached the cave just as the afternoon sun shone on the trees in the valley. <clears throat> Nothing had ever looked so beautiful to the little dinosaurs. They peered into the cave and could see the Dragonosaurus fast asleep. There's the Dragonosaurus. There's Maya and Dazzle looking in the cave. They had to get rid of him so their family could return home. But how? Maya bravely crept into the cave. Suddenly, the Dragonosaurus sniffed and jumped up, blinking his eyes. Maya was trapped. Look at Maya. There's the Dragonosaurus and there's little Maya. Dazzle thought fast. Quickly, he turned his back so that every spine caught the sunshine and reflected the light right into the giant dinosaur's eyes. The Dragonosaurus screamed and ran out of the cave to escape the light. But since it was bright outside as well, the Dragonosaurus just kept on running. Maya and Dazzle took a long drink of water from the fresh spring and went outside to meet the Ketlacotlis. What did you do to the Dragonosaurus? He asked in amazement. I saw him running away. Dazzle scared him off with his beautiful dazzling spines, exclaimed Maya. He saved my life. The Quetzalcoatlus flew the two little dinosaurs back to their family so they could tell everyone the great news. The next day, Dazzle and the Mayasauruses climbed the mountains and settled in their old cave. Tomorrow, said Maya. David, mute yourself, buddy. Tomorrow, said Maya, we can explore our new forest. All by ourselves, said Dazzle. And you can let your spine shine as much as you want, whispered Mother Myasaurus. You'll be safe here. Wow, Maya and Dazzle did it. Oh boy, Maya and Dazzle did it. They scared away that vicious Dragonosaurus right out of the cave. They did that. But boys and girls, we have to think, is that what Maya and Dazzle should have done? Should they have listened to their parents and stayed safe? We're going to be talking a little bit more about that very soon. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna be back to Dazzle the Dinosaur later this week. Now I wanna tell you something. We are not going to work on our sight word packet today. We're gonna to get back to that a little bit later, maybe even next week. I wanna tell Ira, Ira, you turned yours in on accident. That's okay, I'm gonna bring it to you a little bit later today. So I'm just gonna take it right over to your house since you live across the street, okay? 
So I'll bring you your sight word pack in just a little bit. All right, boys and girls, what I do want you to do right now is take out Booker T. Washington. Now we watched a little bit of a video about Booker T. Washington yesterday. So we started to learn about this important American hero. He did a lot for our country and we are going to learn more about him today. Let me get everything warmed up here. Yes, Ava. Very nice. That's a great find, my dear. All right, boys and girls, let's get out Booker T. Washington. Take a look at the cover page with me, David. I want, do you have this one, honey? Just look and show me a thumbs up or just hold it up if you have it ready. Say, I'm ready. Look right here, Mrs. Lai. I'm ready. All right. All right, beautiful. David's got it. All right, boys and girls. So we are going to take a look at Booker T. Washington. Booker T. Washington was an important African-American leader. <laughs> He led the Tuskegee Institute. He gave speeches and helped presidents. Helped presidents. Wow, that is amazing. So I'm going to open this up right here. Let's take a look inside at some important things that Booker T. Washington did. It says right here, Booker T. Washington. I'm gonna hang on just one second. I need everybody's attention over here and I am calling on David. David, I really want you to make sure you're doing all this work with us. So your eyes are right over here. All right, Booker T. Washington was born as a slave. He was born in Virginia. He helped African Americans after the Civil War. So when Abraham Lincoln was president and Abraham Lincoln helped win the war and unite our country, Booker T. Washington was freed. He spoke for rights. He went to college. He was a great speaker. Booker T. Washington helped African Americans. People trusted him. They listened to what he had to say. Booker T. Washington was smart. Do you think he liked school? He did. As a matter of fact, he wanted to make sure that black Americans were educated. They helped him start schools for African Americans. He knew education was a very good way to help people. Booker was good at his work. He was asked to lead the Tuskegee Institute. This was an important school in Alabama. President Theodore Roosevelt invited Booker to the White House. Booker T. Washington was the first African American invited to the White House for a formal dinner. Booker T. Washington wrote many books. His books and his actions still help people today. One of his books was Up From Slavery. He knew that school was important. Many schools are named after Booker. When you learn, you have a good life. We honor Booker T. Washington. Thumbs up if you like to learn just like Booker T. Washington. That is wonderful, wonderful, all right. Let's take a look at the last page, the back cover here. And there is space right up here for you to write your first name and your last name. So that's what I want you to do right now. Write your first name and your last name. Make sure the first letter of each of those important words is capitalized. And make sure you have just a little bit of space between your first name 
and your last name. Beautiful, thank you so much, Avery. She's getting so good at writing her first name and last name. Great job, Samira. Let me take a look here. Thank you, Ira. She's showing me her good work. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, boys and girls. And Morgan looks like she found it. You found it, Morgan? Good, wonderful. All right. Write the correct answer on each line below. Use the word bank to help you. So we have some special words here that we are going to be using to fill in these blanks. We've got education, that's a big word. Leader and speaker. So what did Booker T. Washington think was important for all black Americans? Booker T. Washington thought education was important education is a big word it's this word in the word bank that starts with an e and we are going to very carefully i'm going to try to make it as big as possible very carefully copy it on the line right here so write nice and neat nice and neat here we go education education was important for sure and I'm gonna get just a moment for everyone to write that big important word beautiful thank you so much Samira beautiful thank you so much Noah Beautiful. All right, let's take a look at number two. It says Booker was the blank of a school in Alabama. He was the leader. He was the leader of a school in Alabama. So leader is the word in the word bank that begins with letter L. That's the word we're writing on number two. Lead. Leader. Leader, Booker was the leader of a school in Alabama. Beautiful, thank you, Samira. All right, beautiful, beautiful. And let's take a look here. Booker was a great speaker. And speaker is the word in the word bank that begins with an S. He was a great speaker. People trusted him and believed him. He did good work. Speak, speaker, speaker. There it is right there. Boys and girls, great work. We're going to go down and take a look at the map. And when we take a look at the map, we need two colors. We need green and yellow. Green and yellow are the two colors that we need when we look at our map. Now we know that when Booker was a boy, he was a slave and he was a slave in Virginia. And this V word right here is pointing to the state of Virginia. So we're going to go ahead and color the state of Virginia yellow. There we go. The state of Virginia is yellow, just like that. And when Booker grew up, he became the leader of a school in Alabama. And Alabama starts with an A. It's right over here. So I'm going to go ahead and trace Alabama with green and Alabama is green right over here. There we go. Virginia is yellow and Alabama is green. This is nice. Yes, Sasha? Um, I think you did something kind of wrong in Oh, I flipped the colors, didn't I? That's okay. Just so long as we see the difference. I, I did. I flipped to the colors, but it's okay. 
All right, boys and girls, let's take a look right over here. It says, look at the pictures. Circle the pictures of things Booker T. Washington did. All right, so let's think of what Booker T. Washington did. Booker T. Washington did a lot of really good things. Let's see, did Booker T. Washington cook a lot of food? Well, the article didn't talk about that, but did Booker T. Washington help African Americans get educated? Yes, he did. Here we have a girl who's doing her work, and this is something Booker T. Washington helped people do. Did Booker T. Washington meet presidents? Yes, he did. He sure did. He did important work for our country. And did Booker T. Washington give speeches? Yes, he did. He gave lots of speeches. People trusted him. He was an honest man. So there we go. Those are things, important things that Booker T. Washington did. All right, boys and girls, and as soon as we're done with that, we can go ahead and put this away. We're gonna bring out our writing packet along with our dinosaur. Our writing packet along with our dinosaur. Beautiful, and yesterday we named our dinosaur and we wrote something good that our, something that our dinosaur can do. And remember, if you can't find your dinosaur, it's okay. Your imagination is very good. Ava, are you okay, honey? All right, what is it, Ava? I named my mom and that's why um, I just want to. Oh, wonderful, all right. Sounds good. Well, it's a very cute name. That's why um, well, I my 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 dinosaur is running after me. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. All right, boys and girls. So yesterday we wrote about something our dinosaur can do. Today we are going to write about something our dinosaur likes to do. So yesterday I said, Max can make yummy pizza. Today I'm gonna turn my page and I'm going to write something else about my dinosaur. Now my dinosaur Max is a dinosaur boy. Your dinosaur can be a boy or a girl, but I am still talking about my dinosaur. So now, I can start my sentence by saying he or she. So I can use these two sight words. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna put them right up here, right up here. So you can start with he, or you can start with she. He or she, it's up to you if your dinosaur is a boy or a girl. Now my dinosaur, Max, is a boy, so I'm gonna write he, I'm gonna use my spacer and I'm gonna write likes, which is like with an S on it. He likes to, and now I get to finish my sentence with something my dinosaur likes to do. Maybe I have a skateboarding dinosaur, or maybe I have a dinosaur who likes to go to the park and play with his friends, or maybe I have a dinosaur that really likes the beach. It's up to you whatever your dinosaur likes to do. And is that a hand raised, Miriam? Do you wanna tell me something? All right, go ahead and unmute, Henny. So, if it, we could do a boy and a girl, can we do a woman and a man? Of course, honey. But women and men are referred to in the same way. So I would say she for you, but I would also say she for your mom. So it is the same. The reference is the same. So we would say he for a boy or he for a man. We would say she for a girl or we would say she for a woman. So yeah. All right, uh, question Ava? And Morgan's next. Uh, 
Uh oh, I think Morgan, I think Ava might be um, frozen for a moment. Morgan, go ahead and unmute yourself, honey. So I can't find the paper. Because oh. I looked in the folder, it wasn't in there. I looked in my, I looked in my bag that okay. my mom got me. So I got uh, my mom how much stuff out, but it's not in there. I don't know if I read, if I, if I accidentally left it at home. Okay, sounds good. You're at auntie's house today? Yeah. Okay, all right. I have, I have to see my auntie house two days because my mom has to sleep in the doctor's room for two days because she's sick. Okay, sounds good. All right, Morgan, so how about this? This is a totally solvable problem because you can take any piece of paper that you have with you to write on. If you have a notebook, you can write on that. Even if you have the work that we're doing today, you can turn over your packet and just write on the back on the white part. It's totally fine, Morgan. Solvable problem, okay? So any page you have, you can turn over and write on. Sound good? All right. Yes, all my notebooks at home, and she don't have no papers in her. Okay. So, Mor so Morgan, do you have the packet that we're gonna work on today? Like the work you're gonna do today? Do you have that with you? Let me see. Because any piece of paper that you have, you can write on the back of, honey. Any anything you can find, sweetheart. Anything will work. We we can solve this problem for sure. All right. Okay, so find your piece of paper. I'm gonna to talk to another friend, but literally, Morgan, anything is fine, okay? All right, I'm gonna call on Skylar. Yes, Skylar. Oh, unmute, sweetie. Skylar, I can't hear you, honey. Go ahead and try unmuting. I cannot unmute you. There you go. How do you spell go? Did you say go? Go, go, go. Go walking. Okay, so go is a great word. What's the first sound in go? G, g. You got it. What's the second sound in go? I'm trying to stay out, out of the way as much as possible. Go. Do you hear the? Yeah, that's it. You got it. No, I go. Walking. Okay, so go is one word. So now you're going to use your spacer and you're going to write wah, wah, walk, wah, wah, walk, ing, walking. So I'm going to have you work on sounding that out for just a moment because you're doing great. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to talk to Miriam. Yes, Miriam. So Say it one more time, honey. I need help spelling flowers. Friends? For So sound it out. You're doing it. Sound it out. It starts with a blend. That's right. It starts with a blend. For and friend and I want you to sound it out okay my dear and I'm gonna talk to Morgan Morgan tell me what's going on over there my dear so I got a piece of paper great and I help to spell dinosaur I know the first word is a D so Morgan are you writing this sentence right here uh, I'm writing my dinosaur can dress up. Okay. So you know how to spell my, M-Y, my? How do you spell my? Okay. I just need to dinosaur. Okay. So what do you have so far on dinosaur? D, D. What's the first letter? D. Yeah. I think the next letter is O. Die, die, I. Do you hear the long I sound? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
and it's literally dino. So I want you to work on sounding out dino, and I'm gonna go down and talk to Langston, okay? All right, so Morgan sound and Langston. Go ahead and unmute, Henny. You won't believe what I'm eating for breakfast. Oh, I'm do and mineral with a roll and sausage. Wow, you are a lucky guy. How's your writing coming along? Good. Right on. Writing. All right, sounds good, Langston. I'm gonna call on, we have lots of friends raising their hand. I'm gonna call on Avery. Can I my Absolutely, go ahead. I love it. It's a morning dinosaur. That is fantastic. Sounds like a sounds a lot like a girl I know named Avery. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, Ava. Go ahead and unmute Ava. Okay, so so right here you have she, right here, Ava. She likes to, and then I want you to, you already have that. She likes to go. Do you already sound up? Did you already write go? That's a sight word, so I want you to spell go. And then I want you to think about the next word. After that, and I'm gonna call on my friend Skylar. Skylar, unmute yourself. Can I mute you? Yes. She likes to. Oh, Skylar, you're muted, honey. Will you unmute one more time? She likes to go walking. Beautiful, and you sounded out all those words already? Great job, Skylar. Wonderful work, honey. You can draw your picture. Boys and girls, if you're done with your writing, now is a great time to add details to your illustration. I'm calling on Noah. Yes, Noah. I wanna read you my sentence. All right, let's hear it. Likes to eat plants. Oh, perfect. Excellent. I love it. Fantastic job. Thanks, Noah. I'm going to call on Samira. Yes, Samira. Yes. He likes to play with me. Wonderful. All right, beautiful yes, work. Nice. Great, honey. I love it. Fantastic. I'm calling on Brandon Ace. Beautiful illustration, Samira. Yes, Brandon. Can I do my sentence? Yes. And my illustration? Yes. He likes to. Go. To the beach. Beautiful. I love it. All right, boys and girls. On that note.